Hi there, my name is Mr. Pete. I'm a fourth grade teacher and I am currently reading Kate DiCamillo's The Tale of Despero. Please make sure you have this book when you are reading it and please make sure you read all of Kate DiCamillo's wonderful books. You know, one of my favorites is a book called The Tiger Rising. This is a book about really two really intricate characters, Rob Horton and Sistine Bailey and a journey that they take that involves perhaps this mysterious tiger on the front page. But another great book by Katie Camillo, one of my absolute most favorite authors with Gary D. Schmidt, wonderful books. But the current wonderful book we're reading is Katie Camillo's The Tale of Despero. Let's dive into chapter two. We just met Despero, who was just born, and we met his family, very interesting family with a vain mother and a father who uh, we don't really know a lot about siblings that are standing there. Let's find out a little more about this family. Chapter two, such a, a disappointment. Despero Tilling lived, but his existence was cause for much speculation in the mouse community. He's the smallest mouse I've ever seen, said his aunt Florence. It's ridiculous. No mouse has ever, ever been this small, not even a tilling. She looked at Despero through narrowed eyes as if she expected him to disappear entirely. No mouse, she said again, ever. Despero, his tail wrapped around his feet, stared back at her. Those are some big ears he's got too, observed his Uncle Alfred. They look more like donkey ears, if you ask me. They are obscenely large ears, said Aunt Florence. Despero wiggled his ears. His Aunt Florence gasped. They say he was born with his eyes open, whispered Uncle Alfred. Despero stared hard at his uncle. Impossible, said Aunt Florence. No mouse, no matter how small or obscenely large eared, is ever born with his eyes open. It simply isn't done. His pa, Lester, says... He's not well, said Uncle Alfred. Despero sneezed. Highlight Lester, that's his dad's name. Make sure you highlight Aunt Florence and Uncle Alfred, both characters. They're not major characters, but they're talking about how Despero is born with his eyes open. Most mice, when they're born, have their eyes closed. And they're talking about how strange it is. And I love it. As they're saying it, Despero is staring intently at them, which is making them very, very nervous. Also, his dad was told them that he wasn't healthy and he sneezed right when they said that, a little bit of humor. He said nothing in defense of himself. How could he? Everything his aunt and uncle said was true. He was ridiculously small. His ears were obscenely large. He had been born with his eyes open and he was sickly. He coughed and sneezed so often that he carried a handkerchief in one paw at all times. He ran temperatures. He fainted at loud noises. Most alarming of all, he showed no interest in the things a mouse should show interest in. So he is definitely the ugly duckling. He's definitely the odd mouse out. He's an oddball to his family. He did not think constantly of food. He was not intent on tracking down every crumb. While his larger, older siblings ate, Despero stood with his head cocked to one side, holding very still. Do you hear that sweet, sweet sound? He said. I hear the sound of cake crumbs falling out of people's mouths and hitting the floor, said his brother Tulis. That's what I hear. No, said Despero. It's something else. It sounds like... Um, honey. You might have big ears, said Tulis, but they're not attached right to your brain. You don't hear honey. You smell honey. When there's honey to smell, which there isn't. Son, barked Despero's father. Snap to it. Get your head out of the clouds and hunt for crumbs. Get your head out of the clouds is hyperbole. It's also an idiom. Please, said his mother, look for the crumbs. Eat them to make your mama happy. You are such the skinny mouse. You are a disappointment to your mama. 
Sorry, said Despero. He lowered his head and sniffed the castle floor. But reader, he was not smelling. He was listening with his big ears to the sweet sound that no other mouse seemed to hear. So that's again foreshadowing that he can hear things others can't. And, you know, you have to ask yourself, is he really hearing honey or is he hearing kind of the sense of it? You know, sometimes we use exaggerations that he he sees the beauty in honey and he can he can hear it. Or is it because his ears are big and he just has different senses than his siblings and regular mice? You can see that all his family thinks he's an oddball. He doesn't seem to mind so much because he is an oddball and he's kind of okay with it, all right? So he was listening to the sweet sound that no other mouse seemed to hear. Is it a good sound? Do you get the impression that he's hearing a good sound, the sweet sound? sound. All right. Very short chapter. We're going to stop there. We will pick up with chapter three and once upon a time. Hmm. Fairy tale time. Of course, this is a fairy tale, right? We shall find out. All right. Thank you so much for reading. Click the like, click the subscribe, leave a comment, do all of those things that really help my channel gain traction. I want so many people to read these books, to buy Katie Kimelo's awesome books so that A, she keeps writing, B, we keep having these wonderful talks about them. All right. Thank you so much for joining my channel. Thank you so much for clicking that like. Thank you so much for subscribing. And I will see you on the next page. Adieu. Peace.